Hi, I'm back with Chapter 6 of Nim's Island by Wendy Orr. I'm reading with permission from the Random House Children's Books. Remember our character Nim? She's a young girl, right, and she lives on an island with her dad, Jack. But Jack's not on the island. Remember where he went? He's a scientist, so he went to study some plankton. Those are microscopic animals and plants that live in the ocean. So Nim is all alone on the island. Well, she does have some animal friends. Do you remember her sea lion friend? That's Silky. And her lizard friend, or iguana friend, that's Fred, one of my favorite names. And then she has a turtle friend, too, Chica. Remember, she is using her computer to talk via email with a famous author, Alex Rover. And the author, the person who writes books, she found out it's really Alexandra Rover. What do you think, a boy or a girl? I'm thinking it's a girl, okay? Chapter six. Nim woke up thinking about Alex Rover's raft. You can't hammer two coconuts together, she decided, but if I had a thin piece of board and lined the coconuts in rows, I could hammer a nail through the board and right into the coconut. But coconuts are hard to hold still while you hammer. They rolled around so that sometimes you hit the wrong thing. Ouch! Nim yelled so loud and so often that Fred went to sulk in his cave in case it was his fault. After two hours, she had a black and blue thumb and a pile of coconuts for lunch and one unsmashed coconut. Let's go and see Chica, said Nim. Chica was resting on the damp sand, watching the tide go out. She blinked happily when she saw what her friends were carrying. Chica's favorite game was coconut soccer. That was what Nim called it, because soccer was the only ball game she'd seen a picture of, and because no one else had thought of a name for a game with a girl, a sea lion, a turtle, and an iguana, all trying to be the first to get a floating coconut to shore. There were no rules, except that Selkie wasn't supposed to pull Fred's tail, and Chica wasn't supposed to sit on the coconut underwater. Selkie cheated a lot. Chica didn't cheat much, but when she did, she was very good at it. So Nim threw the coconut into the water, and Fred dashed at it because he was the fastest and best at guessing where it would land. Selkie sneaked under him and splashed the nut across the sea. And she tried to throw Fred across the sea, too, but Nim saw her and shouted. And while Selkie was trying to look innocent, Sheikah grabbed the coconut. She tucked it tight under her strong turtle chin and didn't even notice everyone pickling and pulling, wrestling and shoving. She towed them all with her toward the beach. And when she got to the edge of the water, she sank to the bottom with the coconut under her and wouldn't move. It's a tie, said Nim. Chica can't say if she won if the coconut's still in the water, so it's all, all zero, all. Chica looked as smug as a green turtle can look, and she didn't mind at all. Late in the afternoon, Lim, Nim walked around to Keyhole Cove to check the coconut. All 20 were still bobbing cheerfully around the cove, bumping and floating, loose and free. I forgot it! Nim shouted. Maybe she thought of a way to make you laugh. What do you think? Dear Alex Rover, I've been thinking about how you would make a raft. Hammering coconuts onto a board doesn't work because the shell breaks. And if it didn't break right away, I think bits of it would fall off later, and then the raft might sink. What if you put coconuts in a sort of bag? How would you make the bag? Where, where are you going on your raft? From Nim. Remember, Nim's helping Alex write a book. Nim, I feel like a queen bee lazing while you buzz. A bag wrap sounds perfect. Now, I just need a reason for my hero to find a large sack on a deserted tropical island. Or maybe the bad guys stick him in a sack when they throw him overboard, as long as they don't tie it too well. My hero is going to a tiny Pacific island where, faster than a shopper at half price sale, he'll set off again to rescue the lady hero. I'll be sitting at home, snug as a snail in a shell. I've attached the map I've drawn for the story. Click on the icon and that's the little picture. With best wishes, Alex. You click. That's so much fun to solve it. She stared at the map on the wall and the map on the screen and the map on the wall again. Jack liked maps. He drew maps of their island, the currents around it, the places where they sailed. And because their island wasn't on the big map of the world, he'd drawn it on that too. He knew the crossing of two lines, one going around the world's middle, like a belt, that's the equator, and an up and down line curving with the shape of the earth. This is the hero's island, Nim whispered, and that must mean, remember that back at the beginning, you saw a picture of Nim's island 
Alex Brody's picture must have looked exactly like it. Delkey Fred, she found. Alex Rover's been to our island. I think, she added a little while later. It took her a long time to go to sleep that night. Next morning, Min sang her way through the weeding, the digging, and the picking. She hummed as she measured and marked her charts. She sang so loudly when she climbed lookout palm to check for sails, the seagull dropped his fish. That's what we'll do today, said Nim, and she slid down the tree. She got her fishing rod and met Fred and Selkie at Turtle Beach. Chica was grazing the seaweed just when the water started to get deep. Selkie didn't like Nim to swim out deep, but she let her dive and visit for just a minute. Fred stayed with Chica to see if she'd find an interesting sea plant that he'd never eaten before. Selkie chased Nim back and went out deeper to fish. Nim climbed up on the rocks where she left her rod. Her rod was bamboo, strong and springy. Jack had made it for her birthday and taught her how to cast the line in a whistling arc, the best part of fishing, Nim thought. That was why she hated getting a fish first go. It was like finishing a ball game with one catch. Seven tries this time, and then a fish dancing at the silver end, dancing silver on the end of her line. It's a good one to eat the right size. Sorry, fish, said Nim. This was the part she didn't like. Selkie did, though. No matter how far away or how deep she was swimming, she always knew the instant Nim had caught something. Wait, Nim ordered, but it was hard for Selkie to be patient when fish were being cleaned and she was waiting. When the fish was clean and Selkie had stopped barking for more, Nim wrapped it in leaves and built a bonfire on the beach. She dragged some fallen down branches and driftwood into a pile and used dried palm leaves for kindling. When Nim and Jack had a fire at night, they used matches, but matches were precious because they came on the supply ship. So in the daytime, they used glass and the sun's own fire. She unscrewed the lens from her spyglass. Remember, she wore that around her neck. She pointed it so that the sun shone a bright beam on her kindling. A brown patch grew and glowed, and a small flame sparkled on the dry palm fronds, caught the small branches, and began to roar. Then she dropped a sweet potato into the hot coals and toasted her fish on a long stick. After lunch, they all lay on the beach. The tide rippled over them, and when it started to float them away, they moved further up. Nim got a book and read with her legs in the water, and the rest were on the sand. And every few minutes, she looked up to watch for sails and wait for email time. She texted email. Dear Alex Rover, I've never been so excited in my whole life, at least not since Fred learned to climb on my shoulders when I whistled. Are you really the hero, and have you been to our island? Because your map is exactly like our map, and your hero's island is exactly where our island is. Is that how you know what Keyhole Cove looks like? And Turtle Beach, are you going to come back? From Nim. Dear Nim, this is as crazy wonderful as, well, I can't think of anything as crazy wonderful as an author making up an island and then emailing someone who lives there. I'll tell you how it happened. I made up a story about a brave hero and a beautiful lady hero who sail around the world doing good things for science. To make the story exciting, I made up some bad guys who stole the boat, kidnapped the lady, and threw the hero overboard. But because the story needs a happy ending, I made up an island for him to land on where he could build a raft and sail after the bad guys and rescue the lady hero. So when I looked on the map, I made a dot where there was an ocean current to help him drift to the island where the weather was warm enough for coconuts to grow and where it seemed like a good place for a volcano to have grown into an island long ago. Will you be my island eyes and tell me what you see? Because I haven't been there, Nim, and I'm not hero enough to ever go. All the best, Alex. That's the end of chapter six. Stay tuned for our next chapter.